Now, I remember, I don't know if you can remember this, and you were really extra young, that there was a guy, a couple guys asked our, uh, what do you ever call it, the host guy, some questions. Like, they said they saw this ghost, like, wearing this weird kind of hat. And I remember our ghost walker guy said, oh, yeah, I have some friends who, uh, who saw that, too. Now, you think that guy's just an actor? Well, uh, the... The instructor guy, or uh, the instructor guy. Well, yeah, I think he's just playing along with it. And I, I, I remember I was trying to look out for it too, because it's fun. It's fun to believe in it when you're with, you know, that setting with all those people. It's, yeah. it's fun, but yeah. yeah. Like I said, I remember anytime somebody asked me a question, you know, and this guy was pretending that he knows something about the ghost. So, but it was neat. There was fireworks going on that night. It felt like we we're like in the middle of a civil war. And I remember uh, he took us to the battlegrounds. He walked us to the battlegrounds. I remember one guy and our nephew said they thought they saw something. Okay, I didn't see nothing. All I saw was a bunch of butterflies, not butterflies, uh, fireflies floating around. But I wanted to see a ghost, but I never seen a ghost. So I, I, I for a moment. I saw it too, but I think it's very possible it's actual, actually a person. Well, I think sometimes when, uh, you know, you kind of want to see a ghost so bad, and when somebody's looking at somewhere, you could kind of take a little shape and make something into that something that's not really there. Yeah. Or may, may, maybe you really did see something. I don't know. There's so many ways our brain tricks us in this It does. So. You know, so... And then a second time, we were, we're living in Seattle, Washington now. We went on another ghost walk. You're much older this time. And I remember the guy took us on his ghost walk, took us on parts of Little Underground, telling us stories about famous people who fell off a hotel room, hit the ground, and there's supposed to be a ghost walking around. And we went on that small Little Underground tour. I have yet to see a ghost on that tour. Did no, you see a ghost? No, no I, don't, I didn't see a ghost, but my favorite part of that tour unrelated to ghosts is when uh, he was telling us a story about uh, these people who fell fell out of the, these windows of the building and they died and this like weird uh, old more <laughs> crusading lady walked by who wasn't part of the tour he's like you shouldn't be talking about stuff like that that's like like just like oh, yeah. him. Like, <laughs> I, I remember that some lady uh, I remember that out of nowhere saying you guys shouldn't be talking about that it's not realized we're on a tour with the guy he's telling us how this ghost is there? Where's the ghost story originated from? It's a violent subject matter. <laughs> you know, it's the violent subject. But again, you know, we didn't see no ghosts. Now he did have a digital recorder that he played as a voice. But like I said, it's all I know. He's making that up. He made up that sound. I mean, you know, he wants people to come back on the show. Oh yeah, definitely. So so far we've been unlucky to uh, uh, see some ghosts. You know, uh, I've actually called a few places, because uh, in Washington there's a few ho there's a few hotels that are haunted, and I said, hey, uh, I like to explore the ghost. Uh, you know, the first thing they ask me is, what organization are you from? You know, I told them I'm from Gypsy Road. You know, and they didn't know that they didn't know that company, so um, I was denied to do a ghost hunt. Now, isn't it weird now that a place who says they're haunted. And a regular Joe cannot just say, I want to do a ghost hunt. Unless you're with a big corporation. Is it because they were thinking that if you're on ghost adventures, you're on ghost hunters, that you're bringing them money? Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a very popular business. And you know, so like all those shows, they, they never have the smoking gun. It's always constantly teasing the viewer. Like like guy pretending they heard something. And it's always extremely vague. So. Yeah, so, I, so I'm trying now. What I'm thinking about next weekend is is I'm going to do a paranormal part two where we don't have a lot of graveyards in Washington because believe it or not, 70% of people are cremated. So there's not like a lot of lot of graveyards like back east. But we do have a, a graveyard just about seven miles up the road. And I'm actually going to go there. I'm going to do a veto vlog. I'm going to do a vlog. We're going to do it. We're gonna, I might try, I'm going to try to do it live. And walk around this graveyard to see if we hear some voices. You know, I always wanted to see uh, this graveyard site in Renton. Uh, 
a few miles up because that's where uh, Jimi Hendrix is buried. But I assume it's really like gated. It's private. You it's can't... gated, and there's like a certain time limit at night you can go there. But hey, maybe we'll go to Renton right before they close and walk around, and let's see if we can hear something. We'll ask the ghost to speak to us now, because because if you hear voices, if we can't get voices at a graveyard with all those dead bodies, I'm sorry. I, I don't know where we're gonna get the uh, voices now. Now, one of the most famous stories of paranormal uh, is, you probably heard of the house, Amityville Horror. Okay? Yeah. Now, do you know at all, like I said, you're not really into the paranormal like I am. Do you know at all the story of, of Amityville Horror? Well, I've seen the, uh, the remake uh, about ten years ago. Oh, so. with the, uh, Deadpool in it? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, Ryan it's Reynolds weird. is in it. Now, just a reminder, now, now, Adamville Horror, see, back in 1974, there was a guy named Rado D. Fio Jr. He shot and killed his whole family. That's a fact, okay? That happened, okay? Apparently, when he was in jail, in prison, he mentioned that he, he heard voices. That's why he killed his family. Now, a lot of people might do that because they're trying to, uh, be mentally, you know, trying to get up, not get out of jail, but try to get a release sentence by saying you're mentally ill. Insanity plea. So, I'm not going to believe too much that, you know, this guy really heard the devil and he, that's why he killed his family. But where Amityville's story comes in is a family moves in in 1979 because the house is cheap. The house was uh, uh, $80,000, okay? It was cheap because there were murders in the house. And then I guess that they only, this family only made it less than 30 days where they got out. They said the house was so hot that they had to leave. Okay. Now, now of course, later on in the next few months, the house was uh, investigated by Ed Lorraine Warren, one of the first original, you could say, ghost hunters back in the 70s. I mean, they were the original. The first publicized, kind of like your TV version of now, they were the TV version of ghost hunters back then. Okay, now the question is, nowadays it's easy to fake stories. You got the technology, you got a social network, anybody could do it. Now back in 1979, now some people said they did it just to make a book deal, but, but without all the TV networks, 24 hour stuff, it's harder to make people to believe you. So because of that, do you think this family, can a family move into a house come out and say it's haunted and have some somehow have the whole world believe in it like i said this is this ain't the age of social networking so here i'm thinking this story could be fake but is it really fake because back then it's not guaranteed you're going to get a book deal but you still think stories could be really fake like that because you're not talking about just leaving a haunted hotel you're talking about leaving an eighty thousand dollar house and back then that's worth probably a half a million now well, yeah, I, I definitely still think it could be fake. I think it's definitely a lot easier nowadays. Like, uh, a story like that could spread faster, but it could also be debunked faster. So, it would have been hard back then. So, you don't think that, that you know, at all, maybe they, they heard something in this house? Because, like I said, have, it, you know, you know, getting a book deal on a haunted house back in the 70s, like I said, it's not as easy as, as now. But so, so you really think after all that, you still think it's it's a fake, fake story? You know, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna agree with you. The reason I'm gonna uh, agree with them, even though Ed and Lorraine Warren, the original Ghost Hunters, says this is the most scariest haunted house there is in the world. If this house is really that haunted, what about all the other families who are living there since? The original family of Luntz left there. I have not ever heard another story of ghosts that came out of that house since they left. No, it was, it was only after them. You know, and that same house that they bought for 80000 bucks in 2016, that house hit the market for $880,000. Isn't that weird? So, now, here's I'm going to go with one more story. Okay, let's talk about Annabelle. The Annabelle. famous Annabelle. Okay, now, now, okay. Now, there's two movies about Annabelle. 
There's the original movie Annabelle, and there's one we just saw at the movie theater just this last year. That one is is uh, totally made up from the original Annabelle story. So the one we saw with the little girls out there in the farmhouse, that one's supposed to be totally fake. The other one, Annabelle is supposed to be a real doll that's possessed by the demons, or it's supposed to be like possessed. It, it took over the doll. Okay. Now this Annabelle doll right now is actually in uh, the war. The Warrens, Ed Lauren has a house. Okay. In their basement, they actually have a museum. They have all. But they have like stuff in their museum that they have took and taken from cases that are supposed to be haunted. They're supposed to be this. So in this museum, they actually have the real Raggedy Ann. Annabelle doll, okay, that's supposed to be possessed. Now, can now since you don't believe in ghosts, do you believe that? I don't know if you believe in heaven or hell. Now, this is not supposed to be a ghost. This is supposed to be possessed by the devil, okay. Yeah. So, by possession of the devil, do you think there could be any truth to this doll being no, possessed? There's, there's so much you have to concede to believe that. That no, no. Like, I don't, I, especially what happened in the movie alone, but like, even the original story, no, no not an ounce of truth. Now, apparently, I don't, I don't know if you guys know this story, in the museum where they have the doll, alright, apparently they tell you not to touch anything, not to, like, make fun of something, because the ghost might attach to you. Apparently, there was a person who uh, uh, was mocking the doll, touching the window, and that person, that night, left on a motorcycle, crashed and died. Really? Okay. Is that true? Is that verified? That, 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 that part's true. Okay. Now, they're saying that the doll could have something to do with it. I think that's just bad luck. Okay? Because now, that's a museum, right? So, they tell you not to touch it. You're going to tell me... If I was in that museum, I'm going to be honest. They tell me not to touch things. I'm touching everything. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to touch it all. Okay. I'm not saying you're going to touch everything, but you're going to tell me when everybody goes through this museum, Not everybody did not touch something? I'm sure people are sneaking their fingers on it just to be rebellious. Yeah. Like that's how people are. So if, if this thing is really possessed, if this thing is so evil in this museum, why would they have people come down? To the museum. If if I feel that this stuff, see, 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 this movie Twelve Monkeys is possessed. This DVD is possessed. I know it's possessed, and I put it away because I don't want nobody to get possessed. If I know it's possessed, why would I have people go down my museum to have a chance where this Twelve Monkeys could get on you, haunt you, and hurt you? Well, also, what is it contained in? Like a uh, really strong glass. Like, There's like a, a a glass kind of shape of a uh, like a small little coffin, and that's where you know the Annabelle doll is, is is behind this glass. So it's behind this glass, and the Annabelle doll just it just sits there, and it, and it says uh, you know don't touch. It's uh, strong enough to keep the devil out. That, that glass, like there's not gonna be cracks from the inside. Like, like well, it just it's it knows it's. Like you know, barricaded, so it's and apparently they have uh, 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 they have a priest that does some of these tours, and they supposedly put, they uh, blessed they blessed it. Now that's another did. question. Now, see, there's so much you have to concede to believe all of that. Like that, you have to believe in that whole you know religious idea of like demons and demons and, all. and now, the devil. You like, you actually bring up the next question. Now a lot of the ghosts I watch a lot of ghost stories. Like I said, haunted houses and all that. Now, seems like a lot of haunted houses could be cleansed through holy water, through this. This is where I think sometimes it makes me a skeptic on some parts because are we are we basically saying there really is a heaven and hell, and and all these ghosts are all hell, and it takes holy water and priests get rid of it. So now, if somebody's not religion. Why are they? Why would a, a non-religion person see the ghost when it takes a priest to get rid of ghosts? Well, you guess, know what I'm talking about. It's, it's kind of a weird, weird deal. How is ghost related to religion? Um, 
I, I don't know, it, it adds a different dimension to influence and, and uh, make people believe it, I guess. Like, yeah. It's, it's all an idea of packaging and selling the idea, you know, to you know, I, make people more paranoid, makes them want to believe it more. Like I said, guys, we're, we're not trying to debunk all these stories because I have yet to see a ghost. Like I said, I'm trying. I have I have emailed shows saying, hey, i like to be a, a guest appearance on one of your shows. I want to see if these ghosts are for real. So, like I said, I'm going to put money where my mouth is, okay? We're going to, I'm going to try to do it next weekend. I'm going to look up the times because we're going to have to kind of like sneak our camera in to go to the hub because you're not supposed to, you know what I mean? So, I'm going to have to try to slide it in and maybe I'll do a live show on ourselves just to see. If people say you can't get voices, I'm sure that if we go to the SeaTac, um, you know, graveyard, and we go to the one in Brenton with Jimi Hendrix, and we want Jimi Hendrix to talk to us, and oh, yeah. who else is there? Bruce Lee, Brandon Lee. I would love to talk to those guys. In Brenton? Uh, that's where the Jimi Hendrix is. That, that They're buried where Jimi yeah. Hendrix is. Oh, okay. Good so, so, we're going to do a walk around. Uh, we're going to see if we can get... Catch a voice like everybody else does because I can't believe everything until I actually hear it and see it for myself. Not from somebody else playing it for me. I need to do it myself. Now, are you willing? Because, like I said, you're a full 100% skeptic that you don't believe in the religion world of it. You don't believe that there is any gold, there's no life after death, none of that. So, are you willing to our listeners? Are you willing to go? on a ghost walk at a graveyard with me. For sure. It's very interesting, exciting, you know, it's like... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, guys. That's it for the Gypsy Road Paranormal Factor Fiction, alright? We're going to do a part two. We're going to do a ghost walk. We're going to try to see for ourselves if we catch something. If we don't catch something at SeaTac, then we're going to go to the rented one. And, you know what? And, if we do get some um, voices... My father is buried at a military, um, at a military graveyard up the road. Now, if you don't think you can get some voices out of a military grave, then, then I think everything's debunked. So we're gonna take this challenge. We're gonna take this challenge for you guys. You leave us, a, you leave us comments. Subscribe to us. Join us next Saturday. We're going on a ghost walk. All right, guys. Have a good day.